Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you guys are having an amazing day yourself, and it feels so awkward, honestly, to be in front of the camera right now because, well, not awkward, but I have not sat in front of the camera for like a week and a half, and I'm just used to honestly filming multiple times a week, so I had a week and a half off, which was crazy, but honestly, the days are kind of like flowing together at this moment, so... That could also be why. But if you guys were missing some content, make sure to follow the Instagram. It is Lone Fox Home. I post new photos there every single day and I post a ton of stories a day. So if you want more content, head over, check it out um, and follow along. I am going to be doing some more DIY throw pillow ideas and I have four extremely cute and just like good quality projects. Like these pillows look like they came from Anthro or Urban, honestly. Like I'm very, very happy with how they turned out. So if you guys like throw pillows, this is the video for you. We are going to be DIYing them from start to finish. But quickly before jumping into this video, I am extremely excited to announce that I launched my first ever DIY kit that actually correlates with one of the pillows in this video and it is live on LoneFox.com right now. I'm launching my first ever DIY mini loom kit, which you guys can find over on LoneFox. Click the link, check them out if you want to, and also guys, click around over on the site. I have listed so many new home decor pieces that are freaking adorable. I'm obsessed with them. There is stationery, there is candles, DIY supplies. I also have some of the tools that I'm using in this video, like the gold fabric scissors you guys are gonna see. I just had so much extra time lately that I've been able to do projects and things I've been wanting to, so definitely check out LoneFox.com. Okay. That was enough rambling. Let's get into today's projects because you guys are going to love these DIY pillows. So let's get started. So for the first pillow, I knew I wanted it to be a square shape and I had some excess linen fabric that was actually from an old curtain and I thought I could dye it using a bottle of navy fabric dye I had. So I'm creating a linen ombre pillow. So the fabric pillow that I'm starting off with is from Amazon. I will link this below for you guys. I've had these forever. I bought a big pack a while back and this is the linen curtain that I actually used to film on top of. It was like a filming background. So some of it is stained from past projects and I'm going to be repurposing it. And I'm using my new pair of scissors. These are actually from the website. They're so cute and I just love them. They're fabric scissors. So I'm going to cut out about eight chunks of fabric that are just like random sizes. I just want to have enough to work with. That way when I dye them, I have a good amount of fabric to work with. So I'm cutting out eight long kind of sections of this linen fabric and these are what they're going to look like. And then I moved on into my living room and filled a little bucket and attempted to put on this glove, which was my roommate's glove. And she has a smaller hand than me. So I was like trying to shove it on. And I basically poured a little bit of dye in. I started off by pouring in in way too much. So I kind of started off in the middle of the spectrum of ombre. Uh, so I had to go back and do some lighter colors as well. But I basically just dipped the fabric in, just rinsed or dripped off any of the excess dye and then laid it on top of some trash bags to dry. And I added a little bit more dye each time, just literally like a couple drops or more. That way, each time you dyed the new fabric, it was just a little darker than the one previous. So as you can see, this one's just a little bit darker than the one that I did prior. And I'm just gonna continue this process, honestly, until you have eight really nice shades. And you can go in and re-dip, but always remember you can't really make fabrics lighter. So I actually made a super, super light dye after I kind of did some of the darker colors and then went back and created some lighter colors as well. You're basically just gonna want a nice variation of different shades of navy. And this one kind of honestly goes from like a periwinkle to navy, which is super pretty. So you're gonna let those fabrics sit for about an hour or so. And then you're going to rinse them with cold water to get any excess dye out and then let the fabrics dry overnight night and this is the outcome of the fabrics. I think these turned out so pretty and I laid them out kind of in the ombre coordination, laid my pillow on top and what I'm going to be doing for this pillow is I'm going to be fabric gluing this. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I know that the fabric tack adhesive I'm using is super super strong bond so that's why I'm doing it but honestly guys if you have a sewing machine please feel free to use that but I know not everyone has access to a sewing machine so I really like to share with you guys the easiest and most simplistic ways to create these pillows because those of you who are sewers out there definitely know how to attach this using a sewing mechanism and you can just make it a little bit stronger but some people don't know how to use a sewing machine or don't have a sewing machine so I'm using fabric glue and basically what I'm doing is I'm just cutting strips of this fabric and I'm doing it very organically I am not measuring it at all I really like the look of that like frayed edge and like the inorganic shapes of the lines so I really just went along and applied the fabric glue about a half inch away from the edge and then glued it down that way I was able to kind of fray up that linen 
in and just make it look really pretty and kind of worn in, which is the vibe I was going for. So I just continued it going from darkest first and then all the way to the lightest color at the end, cut off all that excess fabric and kind of just brushed my hands over it to fray it. And that finished off this linen ombre pillowcase. For pillow number two, I really wanted to break out my loom and do a weaven, or weaven, a woven pillow. So I'm going to be weaving the strip down the center. That's going to just kind of be like the main focal point of the pillow. Uh, and then the outside's going to be a linen fabric. I'm going to be starting off with my loom that I created a while back on my channel. And this is the yarn selection I'm using. These are exactly the same ones that come from the DIY kit. So these are super, super pretty. And I'm starting off by taking my 18 by 18 pillow and I'm going to cut one side down to 12 and a half inches. Um, making sure that it's the opposite side from the zipper because we are going to be creating this into more of a lumbar shape pillow instead of a square shape and I'm inserting this inside out and I'm going to be using a needle and thread just to sew across the top of this pillow and it's super simple you guys can just create like a basic stitch you're just going to want to sew off the top here so I went ahead tied a knot stuck my needle through and then how I'm going to be stitching this is I'm basically going to be putting my needle down through the stitch that we created up through the backside, but creating a new stitch about a quarter inch from where the thread is hanging out of and whipping this around. So basically you're just gonna continue this process and keep in mind that you can also use fabric glue if you would like to, but I just decided to stitch it that way I could share it with you guys. Snip off that extra thread and then you could flip your pillowcase inside out to reveal your new lumbar rectangular shape, which I love this. And then what I'm gonna be doing is using a white string to string the loom. And I'm not gonna go super in depth on loom weaving in this video. I'm definitely gonna share with you guys the kind of like pattern I'm going for for this pillow, but I have an entire video sharing you how to DIY your own loom as the one you can see here. It also shares with you tons of different stitches, how to cast on, how to weave, all of my tips and tricks. So I will link that for you guys above and also in the description box. So I'm gonna start off by just using my warp thread and I'm going to do a couple rows of this. I always do this to start. And you guys might be able to already tell if you are like weavers yourself that I should have started this probably about six inches above where I did. I had such a hard time cutting and tying off these threads at the end, but I was able to do it. So basically the ruler makes it so it's a little bit easier to weave from one side like from the right side to the left side. And then when you go back the opposite way, it's just like a little bit more of a in out pattern. So I'm doing a couple rows of white yarn to start. And I use a wide tooth comb to push that yarn down and just get it in place because you're not gonna wanna pull it too tight. So as you can see here, the ruler kind of acts as a little guide so you can shift it upwards and it creates a nice open area for you to put your yarn through. And when you weave it back the opposite direction, you kind of have to go in and out of those warp threads. I love this aqua yarn. It is so pretty. It's actually a roving yarn, so it's kind of very like wool-esque, which I think looks really nice in weavings. And I'm using this really thin kind of pale yellow tone, and I'm going to be weaving through a couple rows of this just to add a little pop of yellow. Cutting off one of the other roving yarns. This one's super, super thick and chunky. I'm actually pulling it apart, which I thought was a really nice little kind of tip because you don't have to use the full thing as is. You can actually kind of pull these apart and use them in smaller sections. This one is a very pale pink, which I love it. And I'm pushing it down, gonna weave this in in just a simple two rows to start. And then I'm gonna add a bit of a textural element. So this kind of gives a 3D look. So how you're gonna do this is you're going to take your yarn and you're actually gonna go up and underneath the string that is to the right side of what you're working with. So as you could see here, you're going to put your yarn needle underneath that string and then pull your yarn through. And it's just going to kind of create this looped pattern as you can kind of see here. And once you get to the end, you can actually go back in the opposite direction. And it almost creates this chevron herringbone-esque 3D look, which I think is just so cute. And it just adds such a fluffy element to this. And I'm adding a little bit of right string or not right string, white string to the right side is what I meant to say. And a couple rows all the way across. Also make sure once you kind of end the color of yarn that you're working with that you leave a 10 inch tail off the side. That way you have enough room to tie it and you also have enough room to 
kind of use it as a decorative accent in the end, which you guys are going to see. So I'm adding a couple more rows of my yarn, just kind of continuing with stitches that I've already done and adding new colors as I go. Up here, I actually wanted to create a little area where I was going to stitch on top and create a pattern. So I created this large white area and filled in any of the gaps with that aqua wool roving yarn, which is, oh, I just love that yarn so much. And then I also use the dowel to create a loopy texture. So you're gonna pull the dowel out and it creates this loopy texture, which I featured this in my last weaving video as well. And then once you reach the end of your woven section, you're just gonna tie off the ends. And I kind of forgot that I was gonna stitch on top of the white. So all I did was use the yellow string and I just stitched a couple of little cross or plus signs on here, which I think just added kind of like a quirky fun element. I just like the element of additional stitching on top of the weaving. I thought it was super cute. So I left this white panel open to do just that. So I added just a couple of plus signs here and there, very organically shaped. continue to cut and tie off the string at the top and all you have to do is snip in between two nails and then just tie them off and then on the right and left side you're also going to have those hanging off threads so just tie them with a neighboring yarn um, just tie them in a square knot which is right over left and then left over right that's going to give you a nice secure bond and I actually left my strings hanging off which you guys are going to see why I did that kind of in the end of the pillow so I'm snipping off any of those warp threads and this is the weaving which I think is just so cute how cute is this I want to remake this into an actual wall hanging for sure so on top of my white pillowcase I'm going to add a good amount of fabric glue and then I'm going to place on top of it this scrap piece of linen fabric which this is all the way back from when I made those Christmas gifts and I made the lavender eye pillows so I'm going to cut off the excess linen fabric that I'm using and then we're going to add glue to the back of our weaving. And guys, do not worry about this. The glue's not gonna seep through. It's super strong bond, and it's just honestly the easiest way for me to attach this. You can definitely go in and stitch it, but you have to be very careful. So this finishes off the pillow, and I just left those yarns dangling on the left and right side. I think it adds such a cute texture to it, but you can also snip them if you'd like to. Pillow number three was actually 100% inspired by you guys because so many of you guys talked about tea dyeing my curtains in my bedroom makeover. And I was like, let's go ahead and tea dye a pillowcase and add a little bit of stitching to the exterior edge and just turn it into a cute little tea dyed pillow. So what I'm starting off by doing is actually boiling some water and I'm going to add in a couple of just Lipton tea bags. I've had these for years. I used to make sweet tea all the time and now I don't because it's just too sweet. So I went and put five bags in there, which gives it a nice good color. I would probably suggest about five bags for the amount of water I'm using here and then started by dipping the edge and as you can see here it honestly immediately starts turning kind of like a brownish tone which I love so I dipped that in a couple of times and then I also went ahead and poured some water directly over the area that you can kind of see where that brown and that white was merging because I wanted it to bleed but bleed very lightly so it turned into an ombre so I actually squeezed out the excess flipped it over to the opposite side and then dipped the opposite side as well this is actually the zipper edge that I'm dipping and this is what it ended up looking like I laid it out for a while and I'm just in love with the color of this pillow it turned out so pretty the next day I went ahead and used some white yarn put it on a yarn needle and I'm going to be doing a blanket stitch all the way around the outside of this pillow and all you have to do for this is just basically stitch from the back side forward and make sure that you catch that loop before you do your next stitch so stitch from the back side forward and just stitch right up through to where when you pull the string through it's going to to catch the loop and you're going to basically be repeating this around the exterior edge you can do this with a contrasting color if you'd like to or an accent color in your home but i just wanted to do something super minimal and simple so it didn't really distract from the tea dyeing because i really love the look of that so i think it's just a little bit easier to actually watch how i'm stitching this as opposed to me telling you kind of how to do it but you're going to be repeating this process around the entire exterior edge When you reach the corner, you can just simply create a stitch and then also create the same stitch on the other side. That way you can start off the other side nice and cleanly. Mm -hmm. 
Once you're done, I just went ahead and pulled the string through one side of the pillow, tied a knot on the back side, and then snipped off any excess thread. And that finishes off this tea dyed stitched pillow. And I think this is super cute and very minimalistic. Our last pillow is going to be a cute kind of like anthro inspired ombre stitched pillow. This one turned out really adorable. It also has pom poms on the corner, which are super fun and just add like a little whimsical touch to it. And this is our stitched pillow. So I'm going to be achieving this with this yarn from Joann's. It's so pretty. And I also went ahead and I sewed down an Ikea 20 by 20 pillowcase into a lumbar size, as you guys saw me do prior. And I'm on the front side of the pillow. I'm going to go ahead and every single inch across the front side, I'm going to create a little tick mark and then draw a line all the way across. That way it is just so much easier to make our stitching lines straight. So I believe I had nine lines in the end and I extended those if they needed to be extended. Pulled my yarn through the needle and this is a very repetitive and super simple pillow as well. Just go ahead and string up through the back side, and then basically all you're gonna do is create like a two inch long stitch and then on the back side, you're only gonna want it to be about a quarter inch and then you're gonna create a two inch long stitch again. So essentially on the front side of the pillow, you're going to want the yarn to show the most, but you're also going to want to have that stitching detail. So that is why I'm only kind of having the yarn on the back side for about a quarter of an inch. So our stitches are about two inches long with a quarter inch gap in between, um, if that makes sense. And then you're going to pull that through and repeat the process all the way down. So you're going to go from the back side up through to your next line and just repeat once again, stitching all the way across. And I think it looks really nice kind of when you make it look almost like brickwork to where the stitches kind of are offset with the ones above it, but you can also make it even if you'd like to as well. And the thing that's nice about this yarn is that it kind of does the ombre work for us. As you continue stitching, the yarn gets a little bit lighter in some sections and then it kind of fades into new colors as well. So this is a very repetitive process from now on. I'm going to be stitching the entire front of this pillowcase. Coming up to the end here, and I just love the way this ended up turning out. You're just going to go ahead and then stitch through the backside, tie a knot once again, and then just clip off any excess yarn. And here is the front of our stitched pillowcase. It looks really amazing. And I wanted to create these little pom-poms. So all I did for this was I wrapped it around a ruler a, a lot of times. And this I know is not your traditional way to make pom-poms. Typically people make them on forks or with cardboard, but every time I tried it, they just didn't look how I wanted them to do. So I just very carefully pulled it off the ruler, tied string around the exact center of the pom-pom and just tied it super, super tight, trying to make sure that each side was even. Um, tied it in a triple knot there. and. Then and went around with my scissors and snipped around the exterior edge to make this into a little fluffy ball. So that kind of finishes off the pom-pom. I also go in and definitely trim off any long threads just to make it seem a little bit more circular shaped. And how you're gonna attach this is just with that string that you tied your pom-pom off with, you're going to loop it through a yarn needle, stitch it through the corner, and just tie it off on the corner. So I did a couple of knots here and that attaches the pom-pom to the corner of the pillow, which these just look so cute. And I I did it on all four corners. And here's another one that I'm creating for you guys. This one was probably the fluffiest one. Uh, I just created a lot of loops around the ruler, placed it on top of the string, tied the string around the center. You just have to be very careful with this. Just tie it around super, super tightly so you kind of gather everything into the center and then snip off all those loops to unveil a puffy little ball of yarn. Once again, just tie that onto the corner of your pillow and that finishes off your stitched pom-pom pillow. Alrighty guys, so I hope that you enjoyed those projects. Um, I personally love them. I think my favorite pillow was honestly the one that I made with the DIY loom kit. I just think the weaving is so fun and therapeutic. I honestly do it all the time and I have multiple wall hangings that I've created that I haven't even shared because they're just so fun to make and I just absolutely love creating them. So I think that one's probably my favorite. And then honestly the tea dye one might be my second favorite, but it's kind of going hand in hand with the little ombre linen strip one because that one's really cute too. But I'm not gonna keep you guys here for much longer. So definitely if you are not already, 
make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week here on Lone Fox. And you can also follow along over on Instagram at Lone Fox Home, where you can get more behind the scenes type stuff, which is also very, very fun. I post there pretty often. I'll let you guys go now. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye guys.